All right, so here we are in a fresh scene of Houdini. And uh, what we're gonna wanna do is make sure we're all on the same layout. So I'm gonna select from this menu up here. Uh, my menu says build, but from this drop down menu, I just wanna make sure you're also on the build layout. That's sort of the default layout for Houdini. And then we can kind of go over what all of these things are. The first thing I wanna do is actually throw down some geometry so I can see what's going on. So I'm gonna hit the tab key with my mouse over the viewport like so. So I'm gonna hit the tab key and start typing pig head. This is the famous pig head geometry that you may have seen in other Houdini demos if you're familiar. Um, so I'm typing pig head. I can see I've got my test geometry right here uh, showing up in this uh, tab menu list. I'm just going to hit the enter key twice. So I'm going to hit enter and then I'm going to hit enter again. And then our pig head shows up here in the viewport. So this is our scene view and the other major tabs that were uh, panes that we have visible here are this over here in the corner. This is our network view and up above is our parameters view. And you can see in our network view that a geometry uh, node has been created that has our pig head in it. Up here, these parameters are, um, you know, every, everything associated with kind of what node or geometry is being selected and manipulated at the time. Um, so this will kind of change depending on what we have selected down here in our network or in our scene view. Other things that are in this uh, view, we've got our uh, shelf tools across the top. Those just sort of help automate certain tasks you might want to do in Houdini. And also we have different tabs here. You can see that our scene view tab is here, but we also have our animation editor, render view, composite view, motion effects view, geometry spreadsheet. These are all different types of uh, views that will help us do things in Houdini. We're not going to really be focused on too many other tabs other than these three main ones that you can see here, which is our scene view, our network view, and our parameters view. So let's talk a little bit more about how to navigate around in our scene view. The way I like to do it is to hold down the alt key and if you hold down alt and left mouse drag, you can see you get this little hand icon that appears and this allows you to kind of orbit around. So you can kind of like rotate your camera around and look at different parts of your geometry by holding that alt key and pressing the left mouse button. Uh, the next uh, one, you can hold down the alt key and press the middle mouse button and that'll allow you to kind of drag your geometry around. So you're just sort of like kind of panning side to side while looking at your uh, geometry. And then the right mouse button, that will, if you drag that right mouse button up or down or left or right, um, it's just dragging it to the right, allows me to zoom in and zoom out of my geometry. So between switching between all these, you can really kind of see all the different parts of the geometry that you'd want to. I'm just switching back and forth between my rotate, my left mouse button, and my middle mouse button, all while holding down the alt key, just to kind of get around my viewport like so. So if I wanted to go look at maybe the pig's nostril, I could kind of position my pig here and hold down the alt key and then hold down the right mouse button and zoom into the nostril. And now I'm kind of looking around at that. So if you do uh, want to get back to uh, your original position, you can sort of certainly do that by hand like so, or say you're zoomed in and you want to uh, view your, you know, go back to your home view. You can just hit spacebar and H at the same time. And that'll kind of return your camera to the default view. To go over some other um, sort of navigational things, I'm going to just throw down another piece of geometry. So with my mouse over the viewport, I'm going to hit tab and start typing rubber toy this time. So tab and rubber toy. This is another famous piece of Houdini test geometry. So you see this test geometry rubber toy. I'm going to click on it with my mouse here and you can see that I get this sort of uh, cursor and I can actually just place it if I want to like so. Just going to move over and kind of look at that. So you can see I've got my uh, test, my, my pig head and my rubber toy, and um, they're both here in the viewport. Now I can grab this, rubber toy's got the manipulator on, I can grab this and kind of move it off to the side and maybe um, using these arrows that are sticking out of it to kind of position it um, next to the pig head. And maybe I'll, I'll look at this green handle and bring it down a little bit. So I've got them sort of next to each other, like so. So other handy things that you can do over here is, um, you know, say I have my selection tool set right here. I'm just going to select the pig head. So now if I hit spacebar F, I can actually frame in on the geometry I have selected. I'm going to go over here and select the uh, rubber toy and hit spacebar F. It's going to zoom in on the rubber toy. So that's that spacebar F is a nice shortcut for framing whatever it is that you have selected. And again, now when I hit spacebar H, it homes and allows me to see all of the objects in my scene not just one. All right, so let's go over what a couple of these tools on the left-hand side do. 
Uh, right now I've got the mouse cursor thing selected and that's basically the selection tool. And you can see that when I go and select back and forth between my two different objects, it's selecting this little like yellow outline is appearing around um, my objects like so. Likewise, that same sort of yellow outline is reflected in the network view. So you can see I've got the rubber toy selected here. And then if I go over here and select the pig head, that the uh, test geometry pig head object is selected over here in the network. Likewise, I can select the geometry. I can go back and forth here in the network view, and that outline selection will reflect over here in the scene view. Now, if I want to start manipulating this geometry, I can uh, do things like so. I can select the this translation icon right here. So this is the move tool. You can see that it gives me three axes, the red X axis, the green Y axis, and the blue Z axis sort of give me a hint as to what uh, direction I'm going to be pulling it in. So I can grab this red and slide it exclusively along the X axis or exclusively along the Y axis or exclusively along the Z axis. And that red, green, and blue color coordination always sort of corresponds. RGB, XYZ is sort of a, like kind of a correlation that we make in 3D graphics. So that's sort of an easy way to remember what axes you're dragging along. We also have these little rectangles, um, which are kind of indicating if we want to slide something along two axes at the same time, we can grab them and do it like this. You can see it's just sliding this along the grid and not really moving it anywhere else, uh, like above the grid. You can see that the, those grid lines are always sort of intersecting the face at the same location because we're just sliding it along the, uh, the, Z, the X Z plane. Um, you can use these other rectangles to slide it along these other planes as well. And um, this little purple square in the middle that appears when you get to the middle um, allows you to sort of grab it and just move it with respect to your view. So it's sort of kind of just moving your geometry along your current view plane. So that's, that's also there as well. If you want to do some uh, sort of rotation, you can hit the R key and that brings you to uh, this icon. So we, to get to the translation, uh, we hit the T key and that brings us to our translation handle. That, R key brings us to our rotation handle and the E key brings us to our scale handle. So the, the R key, the rotation handle, this is, is similar. So we've got our X is our red axis. We grab this red ring and we're able to rotate along the uh, X axis. Likewise for Z and Y. This one outside here, this kind of purple one, this will rotate it about your current view. And then if you just put your mouse over anywhere, inside of this uh, gray bubble, you can kind of just freely rotate it around in, along all the axes in sort of an intuitive way as well. Um, the next tool is the scale tools. Let's hit E and you can see that we've got our scale tools. This purple one in the middle will scale around all axes at the same time. And then we've got our different, you know, things where we can scale it only along the X or Y or Z axis as well as our planar scaling tools, these rectangles will allow us to kind of squash things out or, um, or whatever. I just hit the control Z key to undo just then. And I don't know if you noticed, but over here, while we're doing all that, our parameter view is updating. So you can see that we've applied some translation, rotation, and scale here. And if we want to kind of get this all back to zero, we can just select our translate and hit zero and hit tab, zero, tab, zero, rotation tab zero 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 this is just me hitting tab and zero all across the board and we can reset our scale by setting it to one our scale was a scale of one when we started so we can hit one here and then tab one tab one and enter and we have reset the position and scale and rotation of our pig head so we can manipulate our geometry through the viewport uh, controls and also by setting values directly in here. Like if I wanted to rotate this by 90 degrees around the Y axis, I could select this green field right here on the rotate parameter and type in 90 and that would rotate our pig head by 90 degrees. There's also another uh, method which is called the ladder. So if you middle mouse click on this, you can see that this thing pops up with a bunch of different powers of 10 on it. So if I scroll my mouse up and down, I can select which power of 10 I want to operate at, and then I can start dragging. You can see here that I'm dragging this in increments of 0.1 degree because I'm in the 0.1 degree part of the menu. If I go up here to this um, number 10, for example, I can scroll left and right, and you can see that it's rotating my geometry by uh, values of 10, 
likewise for 100. And if you really want to get super detailed, you can go down here and uh, to the bottom and uh, move by very small decimal amounts as well. So that's kind of what the ladder is. And um, also, you know, if you want to ever kind of return to what the defaults are, you can uh, right click on this parameter and you have a bunch of options here, but one of them is uh, revert to defaults. So I can just uh, click revert to defaults and that will also reset my geometry to zero. Over here on the right hand side, we've got a bunch of um, nice uh, tools that also will help us visualize, you know, we can kind of use this visibility. If we just hold down on it, we can kind of drag down and get this drop down menu where we can choose to, you know, make it so that our cameras or lights are invisible in our scene. It can kind of help um, view things a little bit better. Also, these are our different lighting modes. But in general, if you want to uh, just hover over anything, it can kind of give you, a, it'll give you a little pop out that will give you a, um, a view of, or a preview of what that kind of node is supposed to do. Like this, for example, is going to say normal lighting or headlight only uh, if I hover over this one. So that's sort of uh, what the right bar does. It's got a lot of handy visualizer nodes for visualizing normals and point numbers and all sorts of stuff like that. Another place to go for um, scene view related options is the D key menu. So if we hit the D key while our mouse is over the viewport, uh, you can see that this little um, box pops up and this gives you a bunch of different um, options for choose, uh, you know, for you know, determining what things look like in your scene. Um, in general, what I like to do for lessons is to switch my uh, background. So let's go to this background tab. I just like to switch my background to dark because I feel that it offers a little bit more contrast and makes things a, li a little bit easier to see in a teaching scenario. So I'm just going to tra change mine to dark. Feel free to leave yours however you want. Um, but that's what um, I like to use the D key for a lot. So in this menu, you'll see me use the D key and turn my background to black all the time. 